Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to take a look at the effects of rain on radar detection and command. Now the interesting thing with uh, rain is it's uh, something we're all very familiar with on almost like an intuitive scale, and it's a uh, little interesting when you try to abstract it inside of a military simulation like we have over here in command. So for us, uh, we have a couple different selections when it comes to rain. If I come over here to a weather real fast and hit on that, you'll notice I have no rain, which represents itself as clear sky. And of course, if I crank it to that, you'll see that it gives me extreme rain. Now, one of the things I find very interesting here is, um, of course, the sky, uh, the clouds are not linked to the rain. You can actually do them separately, which is kind of fun when you think about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate the impacts of rain. So I've got myself a P-37 radar. Nothing special. And now one of the things I've done for the purposes of demonstration today is under my message log, I forced it to go to 1x if we detect a new air contact. So if I do this, do you see how the game instantly froze to 1x? Now I can click on him and I can see that I have a target at 231.6 miles. So I happen to know he's a B-52. 231.6 NM, no rain. Actually, if I'm just smart about this, I can come in here and say no rain right here. I'll go ahead and grab this window and pull it off to the side. So let's speed up time again. Ah, we picked something else up. Let's see what this is. That's a, I happen to know it's an F-22, and that's a 29.7. So come down here, I'll go ahead and say F-22, 29.7 nautical miles. Nice. So then what we're going to do, of course, is uh, it's daylight. So I'm going to go mark both of these as hostile. And I'm going to let my SA-3 crew, which happens to be a really talented crew of missileers, uh, do the best they can. And uh, they're going to try to take pot shots at our incoming missile our targets, basically. The F-22, of course, is going to be a very complicated target to hit because it's not only a very high-performance fighter, but it's a very ambiguous target. So even though it's come into visual range and we're desperately trying to lock on it, our fire control radar has no ability to lock on. B-52, on the other hand, no problem. <laughs> Splat. So let's go ahead and load our scenario up again. So we have our initial results here, and this is where things are gonna start getting a little bit different. So I'm gonna come up to here, I'm gonna go to uh, editor real fast. I'm gonna go down to the weather options. I'm gonna go ahead and, um, let's see, we'll make this guy kinda nasty. Uh, we'll make it a uh, solid cloud cover, sounds good to me. We'll crank up the wane all the way, all the way up to maximum, maximum level, level. Hehehe, <laughs> repeat, repetition, repetition. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna unpause, and now we're gonna speed up time, and we're gonna see if it has any difference on the detection distance. Now, I notice here that our handy dandy B-52 was picked up at uh, 231.5, 231.5. So I think it's pretty safe to say no difference. And of course, you can argue that point all you want all afternoon. But the reality is, uh, tactically, not a big difference. Not really a big deal. So let's go ahead and speed up time a little bit. And I'll give it a few moments here. And we should spot something else. Ah, uh, pause my game. Let's see what this is. This is a B-52. Oh, it's not. I'm rather. It's an F-22. And when I come down here, of course, uh, 30.7 NM and no difference at all. So you can see here that we don't have any difference whatsoever when we're dealing with rain as far as radar detectability goes. Now, obviously, if I go like this and I'll make them both hostile targets, so let's see what happens this time. So we shoot down the B-52, no problem. And we actually lost sight of the F-22 when I was traveling along this point because we basically we can't physically see it. Of course, there's this big nasty black back a large wall of clouds above us, which is preventing us completely from being able to engage it. But the tactical result is essentially the same here. And it's actually very interesting. We're using a P-37 here. So when we look at the actual results, we can see there's no difference whatsoever. So we're sitting there going, why? I thought these radars were really, really powerful. And um, you know, they'd be limited by rain and things like that. It's because of the generation and age of the radar. We can see here when we head over to radar.tutorial.eu, a great website, by the way, is the fact that uh, this particular radar came out in 1961. So it actually has the ability to do all sorts of fun things. It's also a very, very powerful radar. It's actually 700 kilowatt radar. So once you kind of uh, mix the two different factors together, even though it doesn't have the most precise targeting, it is more than capable of burning through any rain that might get in its way and limit its maximum range. Now, the scenario changes a little bit. Uh, we've now gone ahead and backed up in time a little bit here to a much, much earlier generation radar. We're looking at the P3 Dumbo radar. And if you actually take a look at the little image that they give us, you could tell that this radar is anything if not remotely sophisticated. It's actually very clear that it is an old school radar here. And it's actually kind of neat. It's the 1947 initial operational date kind of a thing. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, try to detect some targets. I had to also change the database here to make this work. And now uh, we're going to look around and see if anything comes up. Oh, we picked up something. Now, what we've detected here is we've detected probably our B-52 friend. Uh, but one of the things you probably notice about our B-52 friend is he's over here. And um, our current detection uh, places him over here on this side. So we're struggling a little bit. Uh, by the way, the weather is clear weather at this time. So I'm going to go ahead and unpause real quickly here, speed up time a little bit. Uh, we'll let them kind of make a less ambiguous target. 
Uh, we're getting a little better. This is a little better. Okay, we're, we're fairly confident about where this target is now. So oh, we were a second ago, and then, of course, the radar finished spinning around, and now we're not terribly confident anymore, and it's uh, all over the... Oh, we picked something else up here. Oh, boy. Let's see here. And keep in mind, there's no jamming going on here. This is just conventional radar kit technology. This, this is what we had. <laughs> Work with what you got kind of a thing. So we can see here uh, very clearly that uh, after initial detection of about 120 nautical miles from 130 for obviously the B-52, the uh, F-15 was a little bit closer. Let's go ahead and grab our little handy-dandy thing. Uh, 119 for the F-15, and it was, uh, what did we say it was? Uh, about 130 or so for our buddy over here. So if I click on this one, uh, 127. Uh, so if I go 127 for the B-52. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. And again, this is ancient technology, and you can tell very clearly that we have a very, very ambiguous target. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause. I'm going to go ahead and drop both those targets. I'm going to go ahead and grab them. Oh, this is one of the nice things about the mission editors. I can just click on stuff. I can go grab them. Whoa. <laughs> can, can I get an undo? <laughs> Let's go grab a B-52D, which is the correct B-52, by the way. Click on this one. I'm going to go press on and do one of these things real fast. I'll grab that guy as well. I'm just going to take him and move him over here, kind of a thing like that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to crank up the rain a little bit. So I'm going to grab up the weather one more time. We'll go ahead and make this guy kind of nasty, and we'll jam the rain up. So this is absolute maximum rain, kind of a thing like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up time. And uh, moments later, of course, uh, we acquire a target. And uh, we notice that we've detected it at about 142. Uh, keep in mind, of course, uh, when we did our original detection, it's a slightly different range. So this is uh, not valid. So you can see um, we're able to kind of narrow that target down roughly. Uh, we can tell it's, it's out there, about 146, so, which is pretty fair for a B-52. B-52 is kind of a really, really big target. So it's 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 there ish. It, it ooh, got a little closer as uh, we get a better radar. And again, radars are such fascinating tools. Oh, we picked something else up. So then we got a new target. Now this is our F-15 buddy, and of course, as you're probably aware, uh, we picked him up at about 119 last time. When I pull this down, uh, you'll see the fact that our radar detection range is completely unaffected. And again, uh, this is a classic example of uh, having a radar that's extremely, extremely powerful for its size. So even though there is a penalty because of the rain and the scatter that it causes, it doesn't necessarily cause it to uh, give us an issue where we can't see the target in it. There's another issue that we're not thinking of too, which is very interesting, and that's the height of the rain. Now, if I go up to my Switch 2 real quickly here, and I grab this guy, you'll probably observe that he is um, pretty much at the solid deck. He's at the top of the solid cloud deck. He is not anywhere inside of the solid cloud deck. As a matter of fact, he's just skimming across the top. Now, if I order him to move into the center of the cloud deck, let's order him down to 25,000 feet here, which puts him basically in the middle of this giant wall of clouds kind of a thing. Uh, let's make sure seven to 36,000. Yes, correct. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab these two. I'm going to send them back out to sea, so to speak. And I'm going to give them enough time to sort of start descending downwards. Well, that's usually what direction people descend. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow them to descend into the layer of rain that we're actually going to be looking for here. So let me go ahead and speed up time one more time here. Oh, and we picked up a target uh, right away. Now, if I grab my handy dandy guy, this is the B-52, as you probably remember. Now, one of the interesting things, of course, if I unfreeze this here, uh, you can see uh, we're looking at the B-52 here. He's got a range of uh, about 140. 46, uh, I think uh, 152 kind of a thing. In our estimate right now, I'll put them at 151. So that's actually a pretty fair estimate. So go ahead and speed up time a little bit here, and I'll allow those targets to kind of resolve themselves a little bit. All right, he's uh, cruising along pretty well here. You know, you still have not acquired that uh, F-15. I remember last time we acquired the F-15 at about, oh, there he is. I'll give him a second to kind of congeal into a target we can actually launch stuff at here. And when I click on them, it gives me a range of 119.2. And if you take a look down here, you'll see that, in fact, our radar range is utterly unaffected by the presence of this extremely heavy rain, even though our you know, lovely aircraft are actually traveling directly through the rain itself. So you're sitting here going, well, that's kind of a bummer. I was kind of hoping that the rain would like really, really make it so much more difficult to see these targets that are flying directly towards us and allowing us to basically Doppler shift out the rain. And I'd say, yes, exactly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab onto these guys, and I'm going to order them to go ahead and beam my radar. And the purpose of this, of course, is to demonstrate what would happen. Now, these really, really old-fashioned radars did not have good capability to deal with notching. Uh, that's somebody who has no Doppler shift. So as our little F-15 turns, the fascinating thing is we can identify him as turning, but we don't know where his position is. I'm actually not mathematically sure how they would do that. Maybe there's like a shift of a Doppler beam or something like that. 
but I'll give it a few moments to kind of resolve itself because now we're notching the um, particular radar here. But what you'll notice is even though we're notching it, uh, the only thing it's done is it's absolutely ruined our ability to uh, basically precisely identify the target. You know, we think that the target's somewhere in this box. If I opened it up, you'll see that the target is actually not in that box. And even when I come over to this one here, we're a little bit more confident on the B-52 because it is so much larger. But even though we're traveling through that cloud bank in the rain, which would cause turbulence like you've never experienced before, by the way, we're still having no limitations as far as detectability goes. So you're sitting here going, well, that sucks. Um, I was kind of hoping it would be the thing, like, you know, it'd be different, like you could notch it and all that other stuff and it would work. Well, there is kind of a practical upshot to thick, heavy rain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab onto a different aircraft here. And I'm going to go ahead and grab onto kind of a classic aircraft here. I'm sure you've seen me use this one for plenty of things before. I'm going to grab a... MiG-21. And now the reason I want to grab a MiG-21 here is I want to get this really, really, really ancient, not so great missile. Uh, the R-13M, not great. It's um, it's it's pretty garbage. Uh, the range is absolutely minimal. Its percent of hit is basically squat. It will shoot something down, but um, we have a new problem now. And that's the fact that my lovely MiG-21 here now has to come down here and say hello to this guy who's down at 25,000 feet. So now we've created a new problem. Now, if I go like this, like that real quick on pause, speed up time a little bit. I'll actually give him a nod. He doesn't even need to. What I'll do is surprise, because <laughs> my, uh, my F-15 is turning. Oh, we can't do that. We have to actually acquire him. <laughs> this could be problematic. Let's go ahead and turn on my radar real fast here. Uh, this is the Sapphire, my, uh, Sapphire radar, and we're looking real hard, and uh, we're actually going to dive a little bit here. We're going to come down to 25,000 feet, uh, and you'll actually notice I am having no ability in the universe to acquire the presence of that F-15. Even though we totally know he's right there, even though we know that that particular target is uh, located up, there we go, we've acquired him, kind of a thing like that. You'll notice I didn't really pick up on him until I was on top of him. So I'm gonna go ahead and order all of my weapons to fire here, just like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut inside of his corner, kind of a thing. Remember, these are tail seekers. So we have to kind of, we have to temper our expectations a little bit um, when we do our little engagement here. So what I'll actually do is grab him, pull him over here, go like that. I'll let him kind of spin around. Keep in mind, um, our F-15 is utterly clueless of the presence of this guy. As a matter of fact, the other radar crew puts the F-15 somewhere else. So we're right behind him, we're locked onto him. Our 15s coming around. I'm going to go ahead and kick the uh, power up a little bit here. Pick up a little bit of speed to close that distance. Oh, yeah, here it comes. Here it comes. We're closing that distance. Uh, Sapphire ra radar says that he's at a three nautical mile range. I'm right on top of him. Uh, we got to get just a little bit closer here. Just a little tiny bit closer. We'll actually go all the way up. All right, this is going to be a bit of a surprise for this poor F-15 crew here. I'm actually going to have to go like that. By the way, if you want to defeat a MiG-21, just go in a circle. <laughs> So we're catching up on this guy uh, real, real quickly here, and I'm way, way within my range. Uh, it's a four nautical mile. I want to shift F1 here, and I go ahead and target my lovely F15 here. You'll notice this new problem. Weapon must detect target prior to firing. That is because the rain blocks infrared light. It also blocks laser light. It also blocks visible light. Now, the reason this is so cool is uh, because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this guy real quick. I'm actually going to put him all the way over here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'll leave him at that altitude, of course. And I'm going to go ahead and I'll get rid of the rain real fast here. I'll go ahead and grab the rain real fast. I'll make it clear sky. Obviously, a rain and clear sky. These go together. I need to kind of keep that in mind. So now I'm going to go ahead and pause real quick. I'm actually going to drop this target completely. I'm going to grab my uh, handy dandy MiG-21. He's looking out the front window, trying desperately to uh, locate that uh, very pesky uh, F-15 there, which will make short work of him. And we're just going to kind of do the best we can to sort of accommodate and sort of lock onto this guy. Keep in mind, it's still pretty early in the day, so it's relatively difficult. Oh, uh oh, our radar has detected something. Ah, there we go. And what you'll observe here is my Sapphire radar detected him at under half the distance that I had well, previously. As a matter of fact, if I back it up even further, if I were to just dump this target and I'll just let the Sapphire radar do his little scanny scan thing real fast... You'll probably see that uh, my Sapphire radar will still be able to uh, require my lovely F-15 there at about the same distance that we saw a few moments ago. Keep in mind the pilot, if uh, you can see his little tail kind of a thing like that, you probably wouldn't have too much difficulty at all as far as acquiring that F-15. But uh, this is part of the fun, as they say, you know, it's a Sapphire radar, by the way. Not the greatest radar, but it does demonstrate my point pretty clearly as far as a detection range goes. And keep in mind, visible detections at this point are going to be very challenging. There he is again. And you'll notice that with the rain and the clouds gone, 
I am substantially able to detect him. Um, actually, about 8.1 nautical miles versus our four and a half from before, which illustrates our point perfectly, which is the issue that once you bring in the rain and the wind and all that other good stuff that kind of comes along with it, your biggest problem you're going to suddenly face is um, not going to be not being able to detect things at long distance. It's going to be not being able to engage them with fighter aircraft, which is kind of an interesting problem. And like I said, it's uh, definitely kind of fun. And I'll go ahead and speed this guy up to military, see if we can get a cheap shot on an F-15 here. We'd have to use every single missile on our rack there to come even close to taking a shot at this guy. All right, here we go. I'm getting a little closer. I love the fact that if I do uh, Shift F1 here, you'll actually notice that I can't attack my target because it's a chase weapon. It's not a not chase weapon. So again, if you want to defeat early aircraft, um, just go in a circle. It works great. There we go. Yeah, it looks like he's in range. Come on, man. Fire the missiles. Don't disappoint me. Don't dis There it goes. One on the way. So now you have to drop him off to loiter speed so that uh, when the missile leaves the rail, it um does have some time here. Oh, you got R13M'd. So as you can see, when it comes to detectability in radars, um, when you have very, 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 very powerful early warning radars that have very, very, very wide wavelengths, you're not really going to have issues. Uh, once you have radars that are fire control radars, things that are in the X band, you know, the higher bands, kind of the high frequency radars, that's when the problems start to show themselves. Enjoy.